Hi there. <clears throat> I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're about to take up a new subject. We're going to be talking about solving systems of nonlinear equations. That's right. Up till now, We've solved systems of linear equations, but there's so much more in the world than you can even dream of. So let's go, let's get started, and solve some nonlinear systems. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> We're going to solve this system. While this is a straight line, this is a circle with radius square root of 29. Now we're going to solve this numerically, but first I would like you to kind of, sort of, see it. Now you'll see what I mean in a minute. If I were to solve this equation for y squared, I would have y squared equals 29 minus x squared. And then if I were to take the square root of both sides, I would take the square root of y squared equals plus or minus the square root of, of 29 minus x squared. So we'll have y equals plus or minus the square root of 29 minus x squared. I'm going to graph that, show you how to graph it. And while we're at it, let's solve this for y. y equals x plus 3. I added x to both sides. All right, we're, we are going to graph these two equations, which are really three equations, the plus version and the minus version. OK, turn on, turn on, and go to y equals so I'm going to let y1 equal the square root of 29 minus x squared. And then hit my right arrow key so the calculator knows that for sure I'm, t I'm finished. Now I'll go down to y2, say negative the square root of 29 minus x squared and hit the right arrow key. Now I want you to see what that looks like first. You'd expect it to be a circle. Well it is a circle but it does look strange. It will look more like a circle if I do this. I'm going to push the zoom key and the 5 key, which is z square. Now this looks more like a circle. There are gaps here, but try to imagine that they're filled in and that you have a solid circle. OK, now I'm going to come down to y3, and I'm going to graph this line, y equals x plus 3 x plus 3. And now I'll graph. As you can see, this straight line is going to, to intersect the circle at two places, at this, um, at, at this point and at this point. So we should expect there to be two answers after we solve this system. Finding them would be a little difficult. You would have to find the intersection of y1 and y3, and then the intersection of y2 and y3, and it would just be complicated. So let's do this by hand. I think that substitution would be an excellent way to solve this. Since y equals x plus 3, I'm going to substitute x plus 3 into y. So I'll have x squared plus x plus 3 squared equals 29. So I'll have x squared plus x squared plus 6x plus 9 
equals 29. So I'll have 2x squared plus 6 squared uh, plus 6x plus 9 minus 29 equals 0, which gives me 2x squared plus 6x minus 20 equals 0. And look, I have a GCF. 2 goes into all of these numbers, so I'm going to divide it out. And I can do that because I'm working with an equation. I can do the same side, to, same thing, same action to both sides of an equation, and the equality will still be there. So I'll have x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0 divided by 2 is just 0. All right, so I'm going to factor x plus 5 times x minus 2 will give me x squared plus 3x minus 10. So I'll have x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 2. Now those are the x coordinates here on the left. Negative 5 is going to be the x coordinate of that point and positive 2 is going to be the x coordinate of this point, but we still have to find the y coordinates. So, if x is negative 5, I have to find y, and if x is positive 2, I have to find y. And the easiest place to do that would be right there, where I have a very simple equation, y equals x plus 3. So, if y equals negative 5 plus 3, y is going to equal negative 2. And if y equals 2 plus 3, y is going to equal 5. So now I have my two answers, the solutions of this system. The point negative 5, negative 2, and the point 2, positive 5. OK, let's take a break and start a new problem in just a minute. Hi there. This is a very interesting nonlinear system. It's interesting to look at. Let's try that. If I solve for y squared, I'll have 81 minus x squared. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I'll have y equals plus or minus the square root of 81 minus x squared. That will be my y1 and my y2. Now, how about this one? If I solve for y squared, I'll have x squared minus 81. And when I take the square root of both sides, I'll have y equals plus or minus x, the square root of x squared minus 81. This will be y3 and y4. We're going to have four equations that we're graphing, which is very exciting. We haven't done that before. OK. Solving will be much easier. But this is going to be interesting to look at. So let's clear what we did before. Clear, down, clear, down, clear. Go back up to y1. And I'll say the square root of 81 minus x squared. And hit my right arrow key and then the down arrow key to go to y2. Now I'll have negative second x squared, which will give me the square root of 81 minus x squared, and hit my right arrow key and my down arrow key. 
Now I'll have y3 equals that. x squared. Ah, ah, ah. No, no, no. Clear. Darn mouse. Clear. All right. Second x squared to give me the square root of x squared minus 81. Right arrow key. And then y4 will equal the negative square root of x squared minus 81. Now let's graph. Isn't that interesting? There's our circle with radius 9. And this is called a hyperbola. It has two arms, the one on the left and the one on the right. Now I'm betting that these two, that the hyperbola and the circle will intersect there and there and that it's only going to be one point, but let's see. I mean, one point here and one point there, so that would be two points. So we're going to check this out. I remember, remember the addition method, the elimination method from back in intermediate algebra? I am going to add these two equations together. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. y squared minus y squared zeroes out. And 81 plus 81 is 162. I'll divide both sides of this equation by 2, and I will discover that x squared equals 81. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to solve, well, I mean, I could do that, or I could actually take 81 up here to x squared or down here to x squared and plug in 81. Either way, if I do that, 81 plus y squared equals 81, clearly y is going to equal 0 because y squared, let's put that in there, equals 81 minus 81. Okay, now, uh, but you know that was silly. I mean, what does x equal? x is going to equal plus or minus 9. So if x equals positive 9, we'll have 9 squared, which is 81, and that's how y gets to be 0. And if x equals negative 9, then we'll have negative 9 squared plus y squared equals 81, which will be 81 plus y squared equals 81. And when I subtract 81 from both sides of the equation, I'll have y squared equals 0, so y will equal 0. And so I have two points of intersection, 9, 0, and negative 9, 0. This is negative 9, 0, and this is positive 9, 0, and that those are the solutions to the systems. And remember, solutions to systems are points of intersection. Okay, now here's a new system from your homework. Let's try graphing this to get a good look at it. Again, we're going to have y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared minus x squared uh, uh, of no, 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 of 52 minus x squared. See what happens when you skip steps? Goodness. Okay. And over here, we're going to have y equals 24 over x. This will be our y3, and these will be our y1 and y2. 
So, y1 is the square root of 52 minus x squared. Y2 will be negative the square root of 52 minus x squared. And y3 will be 24 over x divided by x. Let's take a look at that. Ah, looks to me like we're going to have four points of intersection. One, two, three, four. We better get started. There are actually a number of different ways to solve this. However, I say let's go for the most straightforward way. I'm going to substitute 24 over x, which I got from my line 2 here. I'm going to substitute it up into y for line 1. So I'll have x squared plus 24 over x squared equals 52. Now, we have to find out what uh, 24 squared is. I don't know offhand. So 24 squared, enter, 576. So we're going to have x squared plus 576 over x squared equals 52. Now, I can't solve this while I've got a fraction, or I suppose I could, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x squared. That will give me x to the fourth plus x squared times 576 over x squared, so that the x squares cancel out, equals 52x squared which now gives me this quadratic-like equation, x to the fourth minus 52x squared plus 576 equals 0. Now this is a quadratic-like equation. I'm going to use u substitution. I'm going to let u equal x squared. In that way, I'll have u squared minus 52u plus 576 equals 0. Now, I'm not at all sure that this factors. I'm going to check and see. I'm going to go to y equals and clear clear, clear, and I'm going to use that wonderful factoring trick where we take the first number, which is 1, a is 1, b is negative 52, c is 576, 1 times 576 is 576, so I'll say 5, 7, 6 divided by x, and then down in y2 I'll say x plus 576 divided by x. And then I'll say second graph to get the table of points. Now, what I'll do is I will look for the b number, negative 52, over here in the y2 column. I should have gone up. Okay, let's go up. Aha, there we are. We're the negatives. There is negative 52. Ta-da! 
right there, negative 52. And it breaks up into negative 16 and negative 36. That is terrific. What that means is I can factor this. I mean, I could always use the quadratic formula, but the quadratic formula with numbers that big would be such a pain. So I'll have u minus 16 times u minus 36 equals 0. Now I'll set each factor equal to 0. u minus 16 equals 0. u minus 36 equals 0. So that u equals 16 and u equals 36. Now, u is really x squared, recall, right there. u is really x squared, so x squared equals 16, and x squared equals 36. And when we take the square root of both sides, we'll have x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 16, and x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 36 so that x will equal positive 4, negative 4, positive 6, and negative 6. Now, we have to find the accompanying y's. We have to find the y-coordinate that goes with 4, the y-coordinate that goes with negative 4, the y-coordinate that goes with 6, and the y-coordinate that goes with negative 6 piece of cake, huh? I'll do a few of these for you and let you do the rest. I think you get the idea. All right, if x is 4, uh, let's choose one of these equations. I think this one would be easier. If x is 4, I'll have 4y equals 24 so y equals 6. If x equals negative 4, then I'll have y equals negative 6. If x equals 6, oh, I'll do them all. They're easy. If, if x equals 6, I'll have 6y equals 24, so y equals 4. And if x equals negative 6, then y will equal negative 4. And so, I can't go back to the graph without re-graphing all that, and I really don't want to. Those are, are, bah, those are our points of intersection. Congratulate yourselves.